This video is brought to you by Sayorite. Visit Sayorite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. The top aft edge of a Dodger receives a lot of abuse, sometimes from the sail or gear constantly rubbing on the edge, or sometimes even the crew just can't keep their grubby little hands off the Dodger. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to add a protective shave guard to your Dodger. This Dodger includes a zipper for the extension panel that runs between the Dodger and the Bimini. Whether you have an extension panel zipper sewn to your Dodger or not, this video will detail how to make a shave guard for your Dodger. These chafing guards can be made of a high quality leather or a marine quality vinyl. We're going to use Naga Hide Universal or Naga Hide All American. So we have a 54 inch wide vinyl and we only purchased one yard. So to make these strips, there's some shape built into it. And the strip will be basically be about six inches or so uh, when it's done. So what I've done is I've measured up 10 inches, 10 inches again, and then I used my clear acrylic ruler and struck a line on the vinyl material so that I can sew two halves together. Uh, so we, at the middle point, we will have a semi-flat filled seam which will join the two strips of vinyl material together. If you have one continuous piece of fabric, there's no reason to join sections together like we are here. Two layers uh, will make one long strip. We're going to uh, join outside surfaces to each other. In other words, they're facing each other. We're going to sew a half inch from the raw edge. Then we're going to splay it open and sew a top stitch, creating a semi flat filled seam to make one long strip. We're going to use our deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide and place it on the half inch mark of the needle plate of the Sayerite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine. And then this will place our stitch a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, our needles in the center position. We'll do a little bit of reversing at the beginning. As we already discussed, if you have a long enough piece of vinyl fabric, you don't have to join two halves together. If you're using a high quality end. leather, you'll probably have to do this multiple times. Now we'll move our deluxe magnetic guide and we will splay our fabric out and create our top stitch. This makes one long strip and it actually looks great. The top stitch actually gives a really neat appearance to a vinyl fabric like this. Doesn't matter which side the tail goes, we're going to sew through that half inch tail on the bottom side. Uh, our stitch here will be about an eighth inch or so away from the splayed out section of the fabric. So we're going to splay it out and sew. Now we really don't have to do any reversing, um, mainly because of the fact that this is going to be patterned. Since we're going to cut the strip down in size, reversing for the top stitch at the ends would eventually be cut away. Unfortunately, that means the top stitch thread ends may pull out of the fabric on the ends. To prevent that from happening after we do the patterning, we recommend using a thread burner. With it, we can melt the ends of the thread, then use our finger and push on it and it creates a beautiful mushroom head, preventing the thread from pulling through the hole. Now our vinyl fabric is long enough and the width is approximately 10 inches or so. Now we can pattern it. Now we want to place this strip back into our dodger on the aft edge so it's facing up. The dodger is folded back so you can see our first stitch and our top stitch. And if you were to flip this out, this pocket goes back and underneath. So, so technically the Dodger, this is the top of the Dodger, is facing up. But the tail here and the pocket is laid on top of the outside surface of the Dodger. And the vinyl strip is facing up. So we can pattern directly on it. But this edge this edge where all the fabric is needs to be laying flat. And the only way to do that is we first want to make sure that this center is on the center mark. There's the center mark. We want to lay this flat. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of fabric going up underneath the dodger so that I can at least make a tail that's five or six inches, depending on what we want. I'm sorry, not a tail, but a, a shape protection area. So with this laying flat, I'm going to take a sandbag and I'm going to place it right on that area. Then I'm going to make sure this is laying flat again and place another sandbag right on that. 
Okay, and then over here, make sure it's flat. This is very important to make sure everything's flat. There's shape in this Dodger. I'm gonna place the sandbag here. But I'm going to stop the protection. For me, I wanna stop it basically around here. Okay, so there's definitely some shape here. When I get to this area, I'm gonna actually just move another sandbag and make sure that it's nice and flat here, and then I'll trace around it there. So we're gonna start patterning from the center and work out towards the starboard and port side. When we get to the curve, we'll deal with that. So here I have a marking pencil, and I'm gonna hold the fabric down and I'm gonna mark along that edge. Now we're to that point where we, where we have a little bit of shape, so I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go this way. Okay, so we have some shape here, so I'm gonna just lay, splay it out so it's nice and flat and continue patterning. I need to move this so it's on the table, it's not. So I'm gonna move all the panels at the same time. Hopefully we haven't moved positions. We can tell by our center. Yep, we're good there. So there's, this is where I wanna stop, right about here. So I'm gonna go to there. And we'll say we're gonna stop around there. So I'm gonna put a line here, though it'll be cut up like that. Okay, so that's about in line with that uh, extension panel uh, protector there. So here's our panel. We moved the Dodger out of the way. So we're gonna cut along this edge. Vinyl fabric does not need to be cut with anything but scissors. Now here, this is where we plan to end, but I'm gonna go beyond that just so that I can shape this however I want. And uh, since I put the mark going into the actual location, we, can, we know where we wanna stop. I would spend plenty of time to cut this. This is a raw edge that will be left exposed. So if you do a poor job of cutting and have lots of slits in your cuts, it won't look as good. Okay, we turned our dodger so that the top side is up. So what I want for this panel, this panel is gonna be right along this edge, right here, this folded edge, right on, on top of it. And if I hadn't had an extension zipper sewn on here with a little cover flap to protect the zipper, I would probably run the vinyl all the way to this stitch line and be a eighth inch outside the stitch line. But since we have this extension zipper with its uh, protective flap in place, I'm gonna end the vinyl somewhere underneath this flap. So right about here. If I measure from there all the way down, we get about a five and a quarter inches. So five and a quarter inches down to there. So that's the width that I'm gonna cut my vinyl, five and a quarter inches. So I'm flipping it. Now make sure that you do the convex uh, curve here. And so now we're gonna use our Serite Canvas patterning ruler and we are gonna place it in the five and a quarter inch mark for us. Yours may be different. There's the five and a quarter inch mark and we start marking the fabric. I'm gonna tape this fabric down or use pony clamps. By securing or taping the end of the vinyl to the tabletop, I don't have to worry about the Sayerite Canvas patterning ruler moving the fabric as I strike my line five and a quarter inches from the cut edge. Notice the Sayerite Canvas patterning ruler does a great job of this. Hold it perpendicular to that cut edge and it creates a line that's perpendicular to that cut edge. Once the line is struck, we can cut it out with scissors. Again, cut this without jagged edges. So here's our piece and there's where we want it to end approximately. And so I'm gonna just take something round and basically line it up to that end mark, which means it'll go a little bit beyond that, and trace a rounded end. It makes it easier for sewing and also makes it look great. Now we'll trim this off and do that on the other side as well. Now is the time to touch the loose thread with the thread burner and melt the end of the thread and then press on it, creating that mushroom head. We neglected to do this until later on and unfortunately one of our threads slipped through the hole. If you do it now, that won't happen. It's now time to base the shafe guard in place on the Dodger. 
Okay, we're gonna flip our hot dog over. <laughs> so we're applying double-sided tape on all edges, very close to the raw edge, but not on top of it. As you can see, we have, what, a sixteenth of an inch uh, before the double-sided tape is, reaches the end. When you get to these curves areas, you're gonna have to put a few wrinkles in the double-sided tape. That's expected and normal. So at the center location, I'm just cutting the uh, seam stick so I can peel off the transfer paper at the center position. So we're going to start here, peel that back, peel that back, peel that back, and peel this back. So we can baste on a, a portion at a time. Okay, it goes like this. We know where the center is based because we have a seam here. If you didn't know that, you should mark your center. We're going to put it right on this forward edge here. And we're going to stick it down without pulling the vinyl out of shape. Vinyl will stretch. We don't necessarily want to stretch it on this. We want it just to lay down nice and smooth. So it's right along that edge. If you don't like where it's at, lift it up and move it but I don't think that's too bad. I might move it down a little bit. So I'd rather have that edge kind of concealed a slight bit. There we go. I like that. We'll do the aft edge first, then we'll move back to the forward edge, which is over here. Okay, here there's, there's quite a bit of shape. So you're gonna have some wrinkles, but you want this to go down flat so you don't create any hard spots. So you're gonna work those wrinkles out as you're basting it so that it is exactly the same size as this umbrella underneath it. Now we'll start going around and, and transitioning to the forward part, which is up at the top here. Again, making sure that everything's flat, wrinkles are worked out. Got a pocket under here. I'm going to pull the pocket so that it's out of the way so I can feel a little bit more. Even though the pocket is right here, I can kind of feel that I don't have any wrinkles in there. And we'll peel off the transfer paper here and do the same thing, no wrinkles. Fabric needs to lay flat. We're gonna check this after we're done basting to make sure that we are very happy with it. Sewing it on is next. This is an entire dodger, sure. so it's fairly large. So we're going to show a little bit more of the sewing process than we typically would, hopefully in an effort to show you how to do it best. All right, we gotta get this underneath the foot of the sewing machine. I'm gonna start sewing here. Need to make sure that our pocket is out of the way again. And we're gonna sew as close to that edge as possible. So I'm gonna use the inside of my in, I mean my right side of my inside presser foot. And I'm also gonna position the needle to the right. That seems crazy, but uh, we wanna sew this so this edge doesn't ever have a tendency to flip up. So we're very close to the raw edge of the fabric. I do not wanna sew through that pocket in any way, shape or form. So take your time, especially at these corners. Sew very slowly. One, two, three. In reverse, one, two, three. Our Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machine is set up in the Sayerite Industrial Table in Workhorse Servo Motor Package. I'm feeling underneath to make sure all my pockets are out of the way and then I'm just sewing through that portion of the material that I want to sew through. One reason we have this phenomenal slow speed control is because of that servo motor and obviously the large diameter balance wheel that we use. I'm stopping with the needle in the buried position. I'm going to feel again. There's a lot of bulk here so we want to make sure that we have the wrinkles pushed out as we sew through it. We want to make sure that we're not sewing through that tail, any portion of the tail. I'm sorry, not tail, but the pocket. 
The reason the Sunbrella fabric underneath the vinyl has a lot of wrinkles is because this is a corner and it has a lot of shape. Anytime there's shape, there's usually wrinkles because the fabric has to take a turn. Needles buried, repositioning, checking my pocket, it's good. Now we're almost to that part where there's no more shape so we can sew a little faster. I'm helping the fabric a little bit because there's a lot of bulk. And now my fabric's starting to take a turn here, so we wanna make sure that we kinda of straighten up the material so that I'm feeding straight in. It's easy now to tell that the pocket's out of the way because we got just, we don't have any shape here, so it's easy. For your information, our dodger is laying on top of one of those fold-up tables on the side. Okay, we're coming up to this where we joined the fabric together and we lost a little bit of our top stitch. I used the Sarite uh, thread burner to basically make a mushroom head so hopefully it doesn't pull through. That should have been done after we patterned it. We did not do it until later. Thus the reason we lost one stitch hole. Now we, when we get here, notice that the presser foot's almost not riding on top of that uh, uh, stitch there. We can actually hold it down with another tool here to make sure that we sew, it sews underneath the presser foot. And while the needle's buried on the other side of it, we can lift our presser foot and push this down. And then we can lower our presser foot. A Little bit of a bump there. I'm gonna push it in there. Lower my presser foot. There we go. This is not just the semi-flat felt seam of the vinyl, but it's also the sunbrella fabric underneath. And we also had to join panels together, so there's also a seam allowance there. So that's why that bump was so large. I'm also gonna help the material in at this corner a little bit. There's a little bit of bulk here, so I'm gonna kinda push the material as I sew it to help the sewing machine. It is a true walking foot sewing machine, but even then, when you get a lot of bulk, uh, sometimes it likes to have a little bit of help from the operator. Tail's still out of the way. So we have that all sewn. Now we have to start working around this corner, and uh, I have to reposition my fabric so I can start making this turn. Okay, so I'm gonna twist my material around. My needle's still buried, so be careful. Just going to lay the fabric up on this table to kind of start making that turn. So to prepare for sewing this curved edge, I push the fabric up into the throat of the sewing machine and basically I am twisting the entire assembly. You can see this whole thing is being twisted and manipulated up here so that I can start right here at this top edge and then let it untwist as I sew. So here's where I'm gonna start sewing and I'm gonna sew to that uh, where we began. Uh, everything is laying flat and I do not have my, anything that I'm sewing through that I shouldn't be sewing through like this pocket, it's laid out. So I'm gonna sew, do a little bit of reversing. And then I'm gonna sew around this hot dog end. It's really a circular end. Now the fabric will start to unsplay as I sew around it because I twisted it. Another way to say this is that we twisted the fabric like you would a spring, and so when we sew it, it naturally unwinds, making sewing around that circular area easier. I'm coming up to where I began sewing, making sure everything's laying flat. And I'm gonna do the reversing again in the same spot. There we go. So we got that sewing. Now we simply need to sew the forward edge. Okay, since our needle was on the right hand side and now we're sewing down the opposite side, we're gonna put our needle on the left hand side here and use the, uh, uh, the left side of the center foot as our guide against the Naugahyde. 
Now we'll sew down this side just like we did before, but this time what we're doing is we're going to make sure that the tail is this little flap and the zipper are pushed out of the way as we sew down this side. This forward edge is almost a straightaway, so we're going to skip ahead to the end. That should do it. Our chafing guard that's been sewn to the aft edge of our Dodger is now complete. Coming up next is the materials list that we used and the tools. There are multiple brands of high quality vinyls that are available from Sailrite. Or you can choose to use chrome pearl gray leather that's available from Sailrite. To help keep the cost of the leather down, it's a good idea to sew multiple strips together to accomplish the length that's required for your Dodger. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. For related videos that may be of interest to you, click on the link here. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.